Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my quarter one favourites of 2022. So these are my 10 favourite books of January to March 2022. Um, I have 10 books to go through. Let's start at number 10, which is Dane Reads. Michael Crichton, The Andromeda Strain. So I did like this book, I really liked the concept and the plot itself was pretty good. It felt a little bit dated though with some of its references to technology. It's basically about um, like a satellite comes down and we learn that um, basically the satellite while it's in space it means that like microorganisms and all of that stuff can evolve and we basically get this like space disease and then we follow the attempts to stop it from spreading. So yeah. At nine, we have Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, The Butlerian Jihad. So this is one of the Dune stories, and uh, this basically focuses on the war between men and machines. I really enjoyed that because, I mean, that's why I like a lot of Isaac Asimov as well, is because I like the way that he looks at the relationship between robots and machines, and like Asimov's uh, three laws of robotics and all of that stuff. I just really enjoy that sort of philosophical side of things, I suppose, especially considering the world we live in, in which, you know, artificial intelligence and robots are, you know, increasingly important. And number eight, we have House Carino by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this was the third in, like, the first of the prequel trilogies that they did. Um, and I think, to be honest, I think that was my favourite one anyway. It was just really interesting to go back in time to not too far before the start of the Dune books. Um, and this one stood out as well because it was the final book in the trilogy so it really brought everything together very well and also did a great job of setting the stage for the actual original Dune series. At number seven we have Bill Bryson with a short history of nearly everything. Um, the clue is in the name here really. It's um, a non-fiction book that just looks at nearly everything. Um, mostly science so it's looking at the kind of from the, from the Big Bang um, through to like our understanding of gravity and then through to the modern era and stuff. It's just a really interesting popular science book. Um, you can tell that he did a lot of research and was really widely read while he was researching this book and then he just distills it all into something that's really easy to read. So yeah, it was really cool. At number six we have Cynthia Brackett Vincent with Eccentric Circles. So this is an anthology that I was a part of actually. Um, so it has one of my Lightfold stories in it. It's a story that's going to be in the upcoming collection called Jailed. And um, yeah, it was just really cool to, to read it because these are a lot of people that I know of because again, it's the publisher that publishes my, my series. So I've kind of come across a lot of these authors but never really read any of their stuff before. And it was actually just really well done as well. I actually did a full review of it. I'll link below to any reviews that I did of any of these books that I'm talking about. At number five, we have The Card Turner by Louis Sakar. So this is basically about bridge. And there are literally sections of this book where it, it teaches you how bridge works and how it's played. Um, and it was really interesting and really well done as well. Um, Louis Sakar, he's the guy who wrote Holes. Um, and so that was cool because, you know, I, I enjoyed Holes. I enjoyed another one of his books that I've read as well. I actually saw this in a charity shop, so that's why I picked it up. And uh, it was just really good, really good sort of middle grade slash YA book um, and if you're at all interested in bridge it'll teach you about it. And number four we have Daryl by Jackie S. So this is a novel about cuckolding um, and like queer internet culture and all of that kind of stuff. It's published by Clash Books um, and I am sort of Facebook internet friends with the two people behind Clash Books. Um, and it was just so well written, a really well done, it's a debut novel and it didn't read like a debut novel. Um, but it's like got a lot of social commentary and that kind of stuff in it as well and that for me just made it a really, really fascinating read. It's edgy as well and I do like a good edgy read. And number three we have Billy Summers by Stephen King. So this is a, a book about a guy who is an assassin for hire basically but he only takes on jobs where he feels like he's doing some good, like he only wants to assassinate bad guys. Um, and this is kind of his last job and King even plays around with the idea of the last job. Um, so that was quite cool as well. And number two, we have Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. So this is a uh, historical fiction about um, a n notorious Canadian female murderess uh, from the late 1800s. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much of it is like proven fact. I think quite a bit of it was probably conjecture and there was also like 
a weird, almost like supernatural plot line to it, which just came out of nowhere. I didn't really enjoy that. Um, but the rest of it was super well written. It reminded me of things like In Cold Blood, um, The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, just all of these great crime reads. And yeah, it, it, it itched my proverbial spot. And at number one we have Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. So it's like a classic horror novel. It's also been turned into a classic movie as well, which I watched shortly afterwards. I can't remember who was in it now. Somebody famous. Hey Google, who starred in Rosemary's Baby? Rosemary's Baby has a cast of 57 actors. Here are the first three, M.I.A. Farrow, John Cassavetes and Sharon Tate. Mia Farrow, not M.I.A. That's the sing singer-songwriter is M.I.A. Um, but yeah, it's just really interesting. It's about a woman who moves into like a New York, I want to say a brownstone apartment. I think that's that's the right thing. Um, and without wanting to give away too much, she finds that one of the other residents of the apartment has designs on her unborn child. And there's a lot of, a lot of sinister stuff going on and cults and all of this stuff. In the introduction to it actually, uh, which in my edition was written by Chuck Paulinick, uh, it was explained that Levin wanted to write a horror story set in like uh, a recognizable place because a lot of the horror, you know, things like Dracula for example, it just, it takes part place that, that takes place in like Transylvania, um, or part of it does anyway. Um, Frankenstein, a lot of that's on like in the remote parts of Scotland. And Levin wanted to write something that set horror in like the metropolis, in a modern metropolis. And he did did a really good job of it. The movie was great as well. I mean, it was just a really cracking read, and it's quite short as well. So. It kind of had everything going for it. It definitely left me wanting more, but at the same time, I think it told the story enough. It, it didn't feel as though it was too short, and actually any longer would have been to do a disservice of it because it would have just been stretching it out unnecessarily, I think. So there we have it. Those are my 10 favorite books of Q1 of 2022. I'd love to hear what were made, uh, what books made your list and also feel free to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.